Good afternoon. Welcome once again. <clears throat> Excuse me. To my daily chat. Uh, this is episode number nine eighty three. And topic today was inspired by a conversation I had earlier today with a beautiful woman who was a bit down on herself. So the topic today is, is if only. Now I'm saying if only that can cover a whole wide gamut of things, but in the context of what I'm talking about today is the program we from. Hey Courtney, nice to see you. Thanks for saying the love. Um, is the context of trying to change your partner because you think you can help them, save them, upgrade them, make them better so you can feel more actually, oh no, I'm not going to jump in there yet. I'll save that one. <laughs> Get ahead of myself. But the idea basically you can change your relationship so that if only they'll be better, then we can have a great relationship. And there's about, there's two different levels on that. One is if only they would change. And the second part is if I could change them being better. So first of all, don't do that. <laughs> I'm explaining more detail what I mean by that. We often fall in love, fall victim. It is so close in this context. We fall foul of this thing, this experience of meeting someone who has so many things that we think we want, but then one or two glaring omissions, things that don't fit. Maybe it's they're the most perfect looking person, but they're broke. Maybe they've got the right house, the right perception, but they're not good in bed. I mean, there's all these. There's, there's these massive deal breakers hidden, the single deal breakers hidden amongst 17,000 things that are really good. And we're like, if only that was perfect, it'd be great. And we stay in that relationship sometimes, because I've done it myself. Yes, this is personal as well. Beyond the point where we should have walked away. And this conversation I had with this beautiful woman earlier today, it was clear that she was regretting walking away because she didn't think she'd given it her all or didn't feel like she felt like in some ways that she had she she could have maybe changed things in the relationship to make him better so she could have what she wanted now I'm, I'm paraphrasing and distorting some things she said because first of all couldn't respect in privacy but also what we talked about was so deep i can't really get into what it was because i don't remember all of it a lot of stuff comes through me it's not something i can memorize and keep track of from weeks or days later or for that matter hours later so i'm going to spin from that into what i feel i want to teach and speak about here so one of the things we deal with is oftentimes we choose relationships that we think we're at the level of. And I talked about this a while ago, where sometimes we, 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 how do I say this? We value ourselves for less than we are. Hey, Michelle, nice to see you. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, gonna be, I'll be hitting my thousandth Facebook Live before the end of the month, I discovered. I'm like, wow, it's coming up soon. <laughs> so anyway, back to the topic at hand. So we, we have this thing about relationships oftentimes where we don't actually aim high enough. And I mean that from the point of view that we we value ourselves less than we really are. So we aim for relationships that match what we think we are or believe we are versus who we really are. And there's usually a gap between the two. And so then what we do is we feel like we can help that relationship become better. Now, maybe it's some sort of savior complex we run, maybe. Or maybe it's just the fact that we don't think we're worthy of having more. And then in that relationship, we think, I'm better than this. Not to say bad about the other person, but saying, how can we make the other person better as well? Because we think we're better. Let's make the other person better. And it's a trap we fall into because oftentimes we're in relationships. And as I said in the title, it's not up to, not to I'll try that one again in English. I'm <laughs> coming too fast. It's not up to us to decide the other person's fate, so to speak. It really is up to them to decide. And when we're in a relationship, sometimes we feel like if only they would change, if only they would become whatever that is, I'd be happy. Now, first of all, that's a really backwards codependency trap. This whole thing I've talked about many, many times about the fact that we sometimes base our satisfaction, our happiness, we predicate that on somebody else's response to us. Good or bad. If they treat us the right way, we'll feel happy. Don't do that. As I said, and I was telling tell my friend my friend today about this, the quote from Jerry Maguire I use all the time is, you know, you complete me is one of the worst examples of codependency I know of. Because somehow it implies we're not complete without somebody else. And that is absolutely, emphatically not true. We are complete whole beings, period. But we forget when we're in a relationship. They make us happy. Therefore, they fulfill us. They complete us. They do all these things that, yes, they add to our lives. But we're already whole and complete to start with. It's additive to who we are. Not filling a gap we think we have. Unless we omit to take care of ourselves. And I was talking, about it about this. I was talking to her about this as well about self-care and self-support. We are so trained in the relationship paradigm that we should give over our power to take care of ourselves to our partner. 
it's a really interesting choice to make and it and it's failing because we know better than that but the thing is we don't well let me say, let me say another way <laughs> we might know about that but we forget because we have this programming that we're installed with and a lot of us have programmed from childhood from other places from our peers from watching tv from all the media that impales it <laughs> impales interesting word impales us with beliefs about how relationships should be and the truth is this oftentimes your perception of yourself is not as good as it really not as good as you really are you shoot yourself in the foot or you demean yourself mm -hmm. i can say this nicely when I'm saying, <laughs> i want to frame this the right way If we, okay, most people who are caring human complaining beings, hi Sue, I nice see you, then we are basically believe that we're not as good as we really are. Some people think they're better than they really are because the ego is driving things. And those ego driven people are not in this conversation. <laughs> but for those of us who are humbler, humbler, humble, yeah, caring, compassionate human beings who have a heart, who are aware of our hearts, oftentimes we think of ourselves less powerful, less amazing, less valuable than we really are that's a whole conversation about worthiness i've done that talk before i'm not going to mention it here but the thing is what happens is we choose our experiences in life including relationship including income including other things based upon the perception of ourself that we're not as good as we actually are so the trick here so to speak the idea here is to elevate and raise our self um say barometer maybe in a way of using it but, uh, but raise our own value of ourselves to the level it really needs to be at, which is authentic. And for the thing, thing is, and I talked about this yesterday, the day before, about how being authentic and being true to ourselves, to value ourselves, is where life really starts to happen for us. It's a dance we have. It's an opportunity we have that is so... Um, missed in opportunities. It's trying to think ways to say it, but that's the reality we have. We're facing this dance, we're facing this opportunity where we get so caught up in the paradigm that we're not necessarily worthy what we really want. And so we settle for less. And then you get into this trap of trying to fix what is less than what it is because we think we can make it better. And again, it's not our choice. So oftentimes, and this is a recommendation I have several clients, and I was talking to my friend this morning today about this, is that we are, um, I'll say this in a nice way, we are, falsely programming ourselves and falsely believing who we are, believing what we're about so we can't have what we really want and it's a false assumption and our true value our true power our true authority comes from owning ourselves and sometimes that requires us to not be in relationship now i'm not saying you should break up a relationship you're in if you're in a marriage or whatever long term that's not my point but if you've been dating really in 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 more frequent and shorter duration relationships and you're not getting what you want it may be time to spend time alone for a period of time to regroup, to realign, to get to know who you really are. And to start rebuilding that false assumption inside up the level of who you really are as well. And I told my friend, and I'm gonna tell you here as well, one of my reminders I keep giving him every day now is to practice self-love. Because a lot of people, they're so busy looking for love out there, you know, on camera, out there, they're not seeing inside. And frankly, the missed opportunity to have what we want is because we don't see ourselves clearly to then see out the world clearly. So, um, how do I say this? My recommendation, my encouragement, my, um, I would say demand is too strong, but my, 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 recommend, my, my wish for you, I'll say it that way. <laughs> my wish for you is that you see yourself the way other people really see you. You know, it's like we do have this bad habit the way there's a saying a quote that is um if I remember correctly is is that if we treated our friends like we treated ourselves we wouldn't have any for most of us we're so down on ourselves we don't really own our power our magnificence and our truth because of something that happened 10 years ago or when we were a child or something in our marriage or relationship or something at work where we did something really bad that over overwrites 30 40 years of goodness that's a whole other talk i can give by the way but the truth is we are way more valuable, worthy, deserving, and amazing if we let ourselves see ourselves that way. 
That's why I have a self-love guided meditation, because it puts you in front of the mirror where you start seeing yourself that way. There's a lot of secrets in this. It's not, well, it's not secrets, but it's like the side effects of practicing self-love is you start seeing yourself as more valuable, more worthy, more deserving, more authentic, and you take care of yourself more because you value who you are more. And that changes your, your frequency, your experience, your desire for a relationship to a better quality, a higher level, a more valuable partner. All that from just doing self-love. There's more to it than that. But that's the, that's, the, that's the foundational step I keep recommending because if you start there, of course, if you sign up for coaching with me, we'll transform your life. But that's another story. <laughs> so um, I will put the self-love meditation link in the comments because I'm passionate about this. It works. And it doesn't take much time. It does require you listen to my voice twice a day. For some people, that's an amazing thing. For some people, it's like, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I could, now, that's the thing. I just, I basically became self um what's the word? Um, deprecating slightly there. This is the thing. We all do that. So let's all stop doing that. Should we take a vow maybe and do a promise? Like, I promise not to be down on myself so much. Maybe you'll take that vow yourself. But when you start to really get and you, grip and you grasp how amazing you really are, then your choice in every area of life, including relationship, starts to elevate. Now, you may be in the position where you were married up or you dated up from where you were in your mind, only to find out now that in fact you, married, you actually dated equal because you really are that amazing that you think your partner is. That's another conversation again too. So if you're not finding yourself choosing relationships that you feel are not working as well as you want and maybe you want to raise the elevation, it may be time for you to walk away from those sort of relationships and start focusing differently. Now, I do help my clients to see themselves more authentically and clearly, and my self-love meditation, which again, which again will be in the comments, will help you start elevating your own perception of yourself to where it should be, ought to be, where it really is. So I think that's going to be about it. I want to, I want to keep this short and succinct because I want to give you a teaching you can, you can di um, digest easily. Um, and since it's a casual, this is Sunday attire, you know, casual attire, I'm going to let you know about a few things so you can find the replays. Again, link me in the comments for my self-love meditation. If you want to get it verbally right now before I put it in there later on, it's barryselby.com forward slash self-love. Easy to find. So this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day. At, sorry, excuse me. Let's say again. This is my daily Facebook Live. Yeah, I said that right. That I do every single day of the week, seven days a week, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch me join me live every day of the week. Um, usually it's 5 p.m. unless I announce otherwise because sometimes I have other commitments. Um, but if you haven't seen my broadcast before, why not? <laughs> if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can watch the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Um, only about two or 300 show up there because Facebook doesn't seem to show them all. They're all there, but they won't show them all. So you can go to like my page on Facebook, barryselby.author, and you can watch them there. Or more effectively, you can watch them on my YouTube channel because I backed them up. Um, if you go to youtube.com slash user slash barryselby, Subscribe to my channel and there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where every single one of my broadcasts are saved safely, securely, and visibly. So you can search through by keywords and titles and find the ones you're looking for. If you want some help in this area of love and relationships, just message me. Again, the link will be in the comments for my self-love meditation. If you want to sign up for something more, let me know in the comments too. So I appreciate you being with me as always and thank you for watching. I hope this has made some um, inspiration in your heart, give you some thoughts to shift. And I do invite you to take a look at your own life and see where you want to improve. Because we all want to improve, but we're better off than we thought we were. Play with that for a while. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.